Hi guys, Mysterious Cat Island back with another unboxing video. I know it's been a while since I've posted. Um, uh, a lot of stuff's been going on. I got a promotion at work. Been super crazy busy. Uh, I have episodes to post. I just haven't edited them and posted them yet. They've been done for a couple of weeks now. So we're going to start posting those as of tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to come back with a, well, two new unboxings, really. Um, today, we're going to be unboxing the Legend of Zelda Game & Watch first. And then we're going to do this beautiful premium edition Shin Megami Tensei Fall of Man edition. Uh, we'll do that one. We'll do that one next. It's got more stuff in it. It's the one I'm a little more excited for. Like, don't get me wrong. I was super stoked when Nintendo at their E3 showed off this game and watch. Uh, and that may be a little silly, but I had one of the game and watches as a kid. Like, one of the Japanese game and watches I found at a thrift store. It was weird. Um, and I love Zelda games. I just do. Have forever. Uh, and this one has one of my favorite Zelda games on it. My, well, my all-time favorite Zelda game. So, uh, let's get started. So I picked these both up. Well, one came in the mail because it could only be pre-ordered online. The other one, uh, I picked this one up yesterday. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut it open very carefully. Please handle your knives carefully. I know what I'm doing. My first job was with knives and swords. I sold replica swords for like a year. It was fun. So before we take it out of the packaging, let me sh show it off here. Look how nice the packaging is. Like this is decoration on the sleeve. Uh, the little links and Octoroks and stuff are also over here on the sleeve itself. If you look at the top, you got another, you got a little, uh, tech tech, I believe they're called at least more recently as of Ocarina of Time. And sorry, my, <laughs> my lights in the way. I don't get very good light in here, so I have to supplement. Uh, so the game and watch comes included with the original Legend of Zelda, Zelda to the Adventure of Link, uh, a Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Uh, Vermin, which is right here, and the clock and the timer. So a little history on some of these games real fast before we get to open this. Uh, the original Legend of Zelda was released in 1986 in Japan uh, on the Super, on the Famicom in uh, the U.S. in 1987 on the Nintendo Entertainment Console. Uh, the very next year in Japan, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, which was no longer the top-down style dungeon crawler, but was more like a 2D side-scrolling, not quite a Castlevania game. Uh, released in 87 in Japan and 88 in the US. Link's Awakening came a little bit later on the Game Boy Color. Uh, it was released in 1993 in both countries and is a sequel to Legends of Zelda Link the Past which were released in 1991, Japan, 1992 in the U.S. on the Super Famicom and the Super Nintendo, respectively. Uh, now, Link to the Past is my second favorite Zelda game. Link's Awakening is my first favorite Zelda game. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, Vermin. This contains the Link version of Vermin, but the classic version of Vermin was a Game & Watch game from 1980. So... It's been around longer than any of the Zelda, any of the Zelda games have. Um, the play clock and timer are also Zelda themed on this, as is appropriate. The play clock has the original Zelda as a playable clock, so you can like play over the clock. And the timer has Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, as it's playable. Um, the vermin difference, in the original vermin, your a farmer whacking moles, you know, like whack-a-mole. Uh, in the Link version, you are Link and you're hitting Octorox. So it's a, it's a fun little, um, like, difference over the classic vermin. 
So, let's go ahead and get this bad boy open. Trying to get it on the camera well, sorry. Go ahead and... It's even got the little color screen, which is really nice. Okay, we'll set that off to the side. Nice gold box, reminiscent of the original gold um, Nintendo cartridge. The Super Mario um, game watch they did last year for Mario's 35th anniversary was also this gold color. Uh, I didn't pick that one up. Mario's fine. I recognize that he's important to gaming history. And as a cultural icon, he's fun. But I'm really super bad at platformers, so I don't actually buy Mario games. With a few exceptions. Buy Mario Kart. I have a Mario Party. I did buy the Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Not that I'm good at them. Or the 3 All-Stars collection for the Switch. Not that I'm good at them, but I recognize that that's going to be vaulted and... Or it has been vaulted by the time I'm recording this. And uh, it may be worth some money down the line. So, I have a sealed copy of that. So, if you look at the inside flap here, it says... Special thanks to you. It's got the little game and or it's got the little uh, link from Vermin here. Right. Come on. Oh, there's something else in there. Oh, what's that? Oh, just a little like the My Nintendo stuff. It's fine. You guys don't need to see that. The Game and Watch user guide. I don't think I need to go over this. It's pretty basic. So, the little box has the Triforce on it, which is nice. It does also have, on the back, uh, these pre-cut pieces to act as a display stand, which is nice. Which is not what I'm going to do with this thing that I know of. But look, it, it also shows you on the inside that you can set this up to look like a display stand. Which is nice that they included this slightly decorative, and it's decently sturdy too. Like, it's, I'm putting some pressure on this. And it's not collapsing. Like all Nintendo products, nothing's actually sealed. <laughs> no, that's not true. There were seals on the outside box. Um, but I like to put stuff in this little foam sleeve, which is nice. Look at that. It's so tiny. I don't know if anybody remembers the... Um, God, the DS Nanos? That came out in, like, 2007, 2008? They were about this size, and they played the regular DS games and the Game Boy Advance games, and they were teeny tiny. I remember a bunch of the managers for the company I work for now had them just, like, on their work lanyards. So I'm not going to show off the serial number for mine, because, uh, whatever. But the back is green. Now, I've been told that when you, uh, oh, that's what the charger is. That's, that's why the box is sturdier than I expected. Uh, when you power this thing on, this little Triforce here, it's a little hard to see, uh, is supposed to glow, which is a really neat effect. So we're going to check that in a minute. If I can find a place to plug this in. I'm running out of USB ports. <laughs> Let's unplug my mouse. Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, make some noise. I don't care. Um, I'm gonna, it probably doesn't have any charge on it, honestly. Might have like 20% battery. Let's see. Oh, power button's on the side of the charger port. The front is this nice sort of brushed metal. Like the original Game & Watches were. Let me get this back in the frame. Like the original Game & Watches were. Uh, the little directional pad, the standard two buttons. Uh... You start select, and then game time pause. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy powered up. Oh my god, it does have some charge on it. Oh, that's neat. Okay. So this opening screen, go ahead, is some of the original art for um, Legend of Zelda. Why is my camera getting fuzzy? Is it interference with this thing? What? Okay. All right, if you say so. Uh, and you know, press time button to start, I guess. So let's go ahead and press time. And it's showing off some of the original game.
All right. So if you click on the game button, you can pick which one of the three games included you want to play. It looks like there are English and Japanese options, which is nice. Yep. English and Japanese, which is cool. Um, I mean, the original Legend of Zelda, I imagine you could play in Japanese, no problem. Uh, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, unless you like speak and read Japanese really competently. I don't know, it's kind of a harder game. Um, Link to the Past, I don't know. I speak very, very little Japanese. Very, very little. And we've got Vermin and the timer underneath. And I don't like that beeping sound. It does have a uh, timer mode. You can turn the volume up and down here from the uh, the settings, pause menu. Need to reset the clock. It is definitely not noon. So let's see. And it just kind of like auto plays with the clock on, which is kind of cute. You can just sort of watch the game played. Uh, or you can start playing too, like I'm doing here. Not that I can do it well. Ah, uh, no, I've been hit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stand here and play. It's been many years since I've played the originals at Legend of Zelda. Um, but I mean, this game's such a classic. It's where it started. 19, a year of my birth. Yeah, and I'm absolutely about to die. Oh, there's the clock part. and uh, I'm going to get killed here. It's kind of auto-playing right now, which is nice. Let's see. Let's start up uh, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Whoops. And English. Starts off just like it did on the Nintendo. Now, if you want to play these classic games and you don't want to pick up the game and watch, I absolutely get it. It is more of a collector's item than anything else. Uh, if you have the Nintendo Switch and the Switch Online service, there these two, the first two Zelda games, are included in the uh, Nintendo and the Switch Online service. On the Super Nintendo emulator, you can play Link's Past, uh, Link's Awakening. They did a lovely remake for the past couple of years, or um, was it 2019? Uh, they did a lovely remake. Um, super cute. Great job. Loved it. It's not a very long game. It'll take you like 20 hours to play. So, I definitely recommend playing it though because I loved it. It reminded me how much I loved playing... Oh, I should probably... Uh... <laughs> probably not play too much of that music. Um, it reminded me how much I loved playing The Original Link's Awakening on the Game Boy when I was a kid. Like, I, I could almost feel the Game Boy in my hand again. It's really nice. Uh, and let me, oh, no, turn up the brightness. If you turn up the brightness on the device or you leave it at the standard brightness, it is true. It's hard to see. Oh, fuck. I got big old hands. The little Triforce on the back does glow, which is just a really, really cute, nice little touch. Um. But, I mean, guess that's really it for the Game & Watch. It's a lovely piece for collectors. Um, your casual player, uh, you might look at it and go, why did I pay 50 bucks for this? I really, I'm really happy to have it. But that's me. So, hopefully you guys are big fans of Zelda 2. Um, and you think to pick it up. Like, am I really going to use this to play too much? Probably not. Uh, the Switch is way more comfortable for my big hands. Uh... <laughs> But it's just, it's just nice. So let's put this back up real quick, and then we'll open the big one. Oh, I had to pay for the the other one um, months in advance, like all, in full, which I very rarely have to do. And it was not cheap, but it did actually arrive on launch day. I just haven't had a chance to, to record anything. Um, uh, I, I work a retail position, so if you, you may know, if you are a manager in a retail position, you are almost required to work Fridays and Saturdays. 
So, like, I occasionally get a Friday or Saturday off off season, but uh, with the holidays coming up, it's not going to happen anytime soon. I'm lucky I got today the Sunday off. There it is again. I love it. I, I would definitely say it's a nice little collector's piece. Uh, probably not for your average person. But if you love Zelda... Oh, God. Okay, before we get to the end, this should have got me 10 seconds. The... We watched the... Me and a co-worker watched the Nintendo announcement at E3. And everything was great. I was like, hey, more Hyrule Warriors DLC. Awesome. Hey, Shin Megami Tensei Five gameplay. Hey, Metroid Dread looks great. I don't really play Metroid. Uh, Super Metroid was the last one I played. But it was like, all this stuff looks great. And then they showed this off and we were like, oh my god! And so we both had to buy it. Okay, that's enough gushing about the Zelda game and watch. Next up, on our, boom, the Shin Megami Tensei Fall of Man Premium Edition. So let me get my notes on Shin Megami Tensei, because Shin Megami Tensei is a very long running series. So this one is, of course, number five. That is not to say that there's only five games in the franchise. There's probably closer to 21, 24. There's a lot of games in the franchise. Um, a lot of spin-offs. Um, the most popular spin-off would be, of course, the Persona series. Although they do differ in a lot of ways. They're very similar, but they're also very different. So, uh, the Shin Megami Tensei, Tensei games uh, were originally based on a series of science fiction novels by Aya Nishitani called The Digital Devil Saga. I have yet to read them, but I would like to find copies. I don't know if they ever translated them into English, or if I'm going to have to find uh, somebody's translations online. I'm sure I can find it. Um, overseas release of the Shin Megami Tensei games over the past 25 years, because the series is... No, the series is almost uh, almost 35 years old. Um, over the past 30 years, we'll say, have been sparse because of a lot of the themes and motifs the games use. Uh, while Persona is definitely M-rated for reasons, Shin Megami Tensei takes some of the things that Persona does to the extreme. Uh, well, more on that in a little bit. So, uh, like many series, each of the Shin Megami Tensei games uh, is a really a new story, new characters, overlap on motifs and uh, themes, but uh, they're not like numbered sequels. Uh, they're usually standalone, is what you'd call them. Um, there are lots of recurring plot elements, um, story like pacing. Uh, the it's very much your choices matter to the overall ending of the game. Uh, one of the ways in which this differs from Persona, for example, is that you can recruit the demons to help you. Uh, kind of like Pokemon. <laughs> You're playing Pokemon as a dungeon crawler with demons and Christian imagery. Lots of Christian imagery. Uh, the Shin Megami set, uh, Tensei series is known for their challenging gameplay, sometimes for the, just the sake of it being hard. Uh, that it is fun, though. I mean, I, I like I like my dungeon crawlers. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy over the years over some of the dark and mature themes, the use of Christian religious imagery, and uh, just philosophical and theological motifs in general. Um, like a lot of things from Japan that kind of uses the Christian imagery, it's just kind of cool set dressing to them. Like the way we use other people's religions in our horror movies, it's kind of like that. Um, I mean, there are exceptions, of course. But uh, the Shin Megami games take it a little bit further. Not quite as far as, like, Xenogears. We're not going to talk about that right now. We're not going to talk about Xenogears. Um, so the first game came out in 1987 on the Famicom. It was Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei. Meg uh, Megami Tensei standing for Reincarnation of the Goddess. The Shin added later, meaning true. Um... And then the second one released three years later, uh, and it was just the exact same name with the number two at the end. 
uh, on the Famicom as well. They were re-released on the Super Famicom later on. Uh, but these games have been on almost every platform from the original, or the, the Famicom, so the original Nintendo Entertainment Console, uh, up to the Switch with this one. Uh, and the Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne uh, HD remaster that came out earlier this year? I think it was earlier this year. I, I have to pay attention to so many game releases for work. Um, but, I mean, there was a game on the Xbox. There's an MMO. There's mobile games. It's not as big a franchise as, like, Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. But it still has a big, big following. And a lot in the metaverse. I have a lot of notes for this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. I mean, the Zelda origins are like, it's a game where you get a sword and you go save the princess. Okay. So, back on the topic of Persona. So, Shin Megami Tensei is not your granddaddy's Persona. Except maybe it is. I don't know. What did he play? Persona branched off in the late 90s. I believe the first Persona game was on the PS1. It was released in America as Revelations Persona. It didn't do very well. Uh, I've played it. It's kind of it's kind of all right. It's not nearly as strong as later games. It takes the Persona games a little longer to sort of hit their stride uh, than it did the Shin Megami games. Uh, there's so many more games in both series. Um, I find that the Persona tends to be heavier on the social simulation and the the life sim uh, being of much more importance to the overall story and yes there's plenty of that in Shin Megami Tensei uh, there are you know there are things like that but the dungeon crawling and the recruiting demons is a bigger focus also end of the world end of the universe style stuff uh, battles between good and evil and or, or law and chaos is generally how they're listed. So no one's evil, but it's there's more of a gray area there. There's like neutral morality too. They have the three tier system. Uh, it's pretty neat how they how they manage it. Uh, Devil Summoner is also a sub series of this. It's a couple of the games. <laughs> so I have I, never, I didn't play Shin Megami Tensei four. Uh, or for Apocalypse, which released on the 3DS, I believe. Uh, the last time I played a Shin Megami game was Shin Megami Tensei 3 on the PS2. The one that there's the meme that's been around for featuring Dante from Devil May Cry. Yeah, that's the game. <laughs> He's in that game. Uh, I believe in the remaster, you can pay extra. You can buy like the digital deluxe version. And get Dante in your game still. Uh, if not, he's replaced by another character, which is fine. Uh, I like Devil May Cry. I'm a big Devil May Cry fan. Um, they're just stylish and fun. Kind of like Persona's stylish and fun. Although Persona has way more adult themes. And Devil May Cry is all about Dante being a badass and fighting demons. So, I mean, whatever, you know. Uh <laughs> Uh, another spinoff, which is pretty popular, uh, came out on the Wii U and then the Switch the f a few years later, or yeah, a few years later, really, uh, called Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp FE. Well, Tokyo Mirage Session is what would happen if Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem came together. So two things I love, uh, and it's kind of silly and... Like, it's got its serious moments, but it's way... It's not nearly as dark as most of the Shin Megami games. Uh, it's just pop idols and Fire Emblem and, you know, it's colorful and there's musical numbers. And it's just really good. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. If you want something a little more lighthearted with a similar sort of uh, combat system, it's a great option for you. Uh, it's out on the Switch. It's it's stupid. Or if you have a Wii U, go pick up on the Wii U. You can probably find it really cheap on the Wii U. Um, it's fun. I enjoyed it. There's been uh, multiple manga and anime adaptations. Mo most of Persona got more of the anime adaptations than Shin Megami did. I guess that because Persona style sort of le and storytelling lends itself a little more to the uh, the anime style stuff, especially since 
slice of life and school life anime is so big and such a big focus of personas generally your character in high school not always but generally I know in the first one you are, and then three, four, and five. It's been ages since I played two, so I can't really remember. Um, again, popular motifs. World mythology, religion, uh, lots of psychology, philosophy, uh, occultism, cyberpunk. It's just this weird and good mesh of science fiction and fantasy um, that just... It feels kind of natural in the world you're seeing it in. So supercomputers and demons both being a thing makes sense. It's, it's executed really well. Um, so if you like those kinds of things and the use of, you know, Christian imagery in an anime or Japanese style setting, uh, there, there's a lot of talk of Buddhism, uh, lots of punk style elements, occultism, if you like things like that and you like dungeon crawlers, definitely give this this one a try. Uh, even if you don't want to go back and play 3, it's a little... It's not as refined looking as this one. I haven't gotten to play this one yet. Like I said, it's still wrapped in plastic. I wanted to unbox it on video. Oof, that light gets hot. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's, that's really it. Let's open it up. Uh, if you want to read more on the Shin Megami... Oh, my knife is already open. Um, the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, there's a great Wikipedia article, it's very, very complete, uh, and, uh, has a timeline of when the games were, are, were released, uh, which will hopefully help people realize that Shin Megami Tensei is not copying Persona like certain other, I guess, younger gamer journals have uh, seemed to gotten into their heads. It's been around for longer. And the divergence is... Like... The divergence is clear, but also... Like, the, um... The similarities between them. And the fact that they're both fucking made by Atlas. Would make you think, Hey, maybe they're sister series. They're sister series. It's like Persona 5, but without the heart. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Oh, I should have shown the back before I peeled all that off, but whatever. So, the contents of this include... Sorry, I pulled on my arm sleeve. It's cold in here, and I don't like wearing long sleeve shirts. Uh, <laughs> a uh, two-disc soundtrack. It looks like it comes in a nice case, too. The sling bag, which has Jack Frost. He's kind of the mascot of the Shin Megami games. He's adorable. The steelbook, which... um. Some retailers still have the Steelbook launch copies in stock. I think it's mostly GameStops. And the Forbidden Book of Demons, which is supposed to be over 100 pages. So, as you can see on the back, we have our main character. We've got our main character. He got blue hair. Gotta have blue hair. Uh, <laughs> Godhood awaits. And then some lovely screenshots. It's, of course, for the Switch. This is currently a Switch exclusive. It is M-rated for these reasons. You should know that if you're under the age of 17 and your parents ask, why do you want this game? And you have to explain to them, well, there are some sexual themes, but I promise it's not too weird, Mom. It's going to be weird. There's famously, in Persona and Shin Megami Tensei, a monster that straight up looks like a penis. It's horrifying. <laughs> so, uh, the little blurb on the back. Godhood awaits. The ambitions of God and human clash among the horror of a dying world. Decide what is worth saving, and prepare to prepare to sacrifice everything in its name. So let's take the dust cover off. I love the image on this side. It's very reminiscent of the Persona art style that they use now, but instead of the red, black, white uh, color scheme they have, this one seems to have a much more... Um, blue, yellow, orange, and silver uh, color scheme, which I love. It's got a box. It's got our main character on it. He's being, you know, dusted by Xana Than Thanos. I don't care. I don't watch the Marvel movies. 
the last Marvel movie I watched was Thor Ragnarok, and I didn't even watch the whole thing. And that's nothing on Thor Ragnarok itself. I just got distracted. Um, the last one I watched to completion was Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So, let's open this bad boy up. I'm tired of Marvel movies, you guys. <laughs> People take them so seriously, and you shouldn't. They're just comic book movies. Although, I do kind of want to see the Moon Knight movie, because I like Moon Knight. We have an image of the demons with glowing eyes here in the front of in the, in the top of the box with, with Jack right here in the middle. What a nice little touch. Okay, so I'm going to fold this open a little bit. So it looks like our sling bag is right here on top. Let's pull that out first. I have no idea how long I've been recording. I love bags. Uh... One of my, uh, you guys like that? I'm doing it right near the mic, just for you. <laughs> Plastic crinkle, ASMR. Um, no, one of my favorite things is to go to local thrift stores and buy the ugliest bags I conceivably can. also love nerdy themed purses, so I have like a bunch of Zelda themed. I have some Sailor Moon bags. So yeah, it's just a simple little crossbody sling bang neutral in, you know, design, really. Uh, so something you could kind of wear everywhere, but with a nice little discreet Jack Frost there. A decently long strap. I'd probably wear this, even though I'm wide in the upper body region. Let's see, we've got two zippers here. There's the inside. It's a bag. I mean, it's poly... It's like a bag you'd buy at a store. It's it's a canvas bag with a helmet now. Sorry, I'm raving on Bethesda now. A nice little, like, slightly mesh back area. A little pocket. Nothing super fancy, but, like, definitely be great for a convention or something along those lines. I'm too small to take everything to work, I take. So we're going to show that off just one more time and set it off the side. Okay. Next up is this two-disc soundtrack, which feels like it's in a really, really big uh, DVD case. Oh, God, I remember when video games used to come in cases this big. They're all like this now. Uh, except the Switch games. Uh, it's got a list of all the songs on the back. It's hard to see because of my light. Uh, there's ten songs on the first disc and 25 songs on the second disc I remember having I remember buying um, ripped DVDs offline from a place called discount anime DVD that doesn't, that doesn't exist anymore and they would come in the clear cases like this with cover like, like they'd come like this <laughs> with cover art they had printed and uh, it'd be either Japanese subs only or it would be Japanese subs and like the Hong Kong rip subs, which were n almost never good. Even older than that, I remember having to off tangent having to buy anime or not buy anime, but send fan sub companies VHS tapes and or sending them a couple of bucks. I think it was like seven bucks a tape, and then waiting to get shipped the tapes back, which took. Like a four week process total, they'd record theirs with the subtitles that they made, that they translated, and um, use the master tape to record yours. So you were getting a copy. Um, it, and being into anime in the 90s was hard because VHSs at the store, anime, anime VHSs at the stores that carried them, so EB Games, GameStop, and occasionally Blockbuster were $30 for three episodes if you were lucky. Okay. Don't know why I closed that knife. I know I'm going to need it again. Let's go ahead and peel this plastic off. We've got a nice shiny again. Not for resale. Ah, oh, damn. I didn't actually expect them to be black and white on the inside. I don't know. Maybe that's up to me. Uh, but I love the sort of universe design on this one, and then the uh, branching swirly design on that one. That's a nice, nice effect. 
I like I like having video game soundtracks. Beautiful CDs. I'm not gonna pull them both out. You guys know what CDs look like. Well, maybe you know what CDs look like. Look like they're kind of a a format that's dying off. People buy still buy CDs nowadays. I haven't bought a CD. In this. No, I can't say that. I have bought a CD. It wasn't in the store, but I ordered it. Um. No. Okay. Next up is oh no, our book of demons. Which is a pretty hefty little book, actually. It's really hard to see the design on the front. Yeah, the, it says Forbidden Book of Demons. Oh, I guess it's easier to see on camera. I don't know, my lighting in here is bad. It's, you know, it's decently thick here. It's supposed to be 100 plus pages. We're not going to go through the whole book. I know I, when I did the Fire Emblem video, I went through a lot of the book to show off pictures of Navarre. <laughs> Nice glossy paper on the heavier weight. Oh man, it's got them alphabetized. It's got the glossary in the front. Weird. Okay, the glossary, the index in the front. I know what the parts of a book are. Promise. It's a pretty big index. I wonder if I can find the penis monster. <clears throat> but you've got all sorts of gods like Zeus and Odin. Odin with his classic raven. Love it. And his spear. Great. But then you also have like Hindu gods like Vishnu. Some liberties taken with designs and whatnot. And then you have... So like Demeter's design is so cute. I love it. There's some really, really nice designs. Lashmi... Edun, which if you know anything about um, Norse mythology, uh, she's the goddess who cares for the golden apples that keep the gods young. Let's see. I mean, there's plenty of uh, Shinto gods as well. Gods of Celtic lore, gods of, you know, Hindu lore. All with, uh, I do like Fortuna. Here. She's got the wheel as a midriff because, you know, the wheel of fortune. Also, Fion here. I'm not going to try and say his last name because I am not up on Gaelic at all. Gaelic is one of those languages I always intend to learn, um, but uh, shit gets away from me. But then you also have, like, Maria, the mother of Jesus. This game's weird. <sighs> I said I wasn't going to show off every one of these characters, and I won't. Just some choice ones. Let's see. Queen Mab's design is really nice. You know, your classic fairy, your pixie. Jack Frost, look how cute he is! This adorable boy who go hee ho. Lilith. You also have Black Frost, who is, I guess, chaotic Jack Frost. He's a he's listed as a knight, a Jack Frost that grew pa powerful and evil. Where is the penis monster? Lots of uh, classic uh, demons. Oh, there's the penis monster, Mara. That's a penis. He's terrifying. Uh, but yeah, nice little descriptions with every with every uh, one of the gods and things listed. Hi, Ataro. Hmm. Supposed to be a monkey. Oh, okay, now. Sorry, I was reading the little tale they had included. Uh, some of these like are actual mythological creatures, and I didn't know about some of them. The more you know. Look, it's Puss and Boots. I mean, Cushy. 
Uh, there is also a long dog. <laughs> the dog is so long. Inugami. An evil teddy bear, your elementals. Mothman! I forgot Mothman was in this game. As you may be able to tell, I like Mothman. I like cryptids. <laughs> He's really silly looking in this game, though. A cryptid sighted in West Virginia from the 1960s to 1980s. It has red shining eyes and was known for the fin-like appendages on both sides of its body. It has been said to walk on two feet and fly without moving these appendages. It has a keen sense for blood, really? <sighs> um, which allows it to easily track its prey. Eyewitnesses say that a UFO was sighted when Mothman appeared, so many believe it is actually an alien. Somebody from West Virginia is going to have to... I know, I know some Mothman lore. This is not quite the case, but whatever, it's fine. This is a video game. I'm not expecting 100% accuracy. Some classic D&D monsters, like the Black Ooze. Love, love using uh, oozes in my campaigns when I do them. My party hates it. I love it. Ish. Oh, that's Inanna. Okay. Promise. Let's see. What else? What else? I was trying to see if there's anybody else, like, really interesting. Like, there's plenty of really interesting character designs. And I'm sure you can look up every one of these. Ah, the Sichigumo. I believe they're, uh, Japanese spider demons. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Lucifer's in this game. He will always be in the games. The Hydra is fucking terrifying. Look how scared that bitch is. Like, some of the character designs are, like, adorable, and some of them are like, whoa. But yeah, a lovely little hardbound art book. I had a guy at work complaining that they don't give out full-size art books with video games anymore. And I'm like, man, the last time they did that was, I think, Sweet Coden 5, something along those lines. And uh, Sweet Coden 5 came out on the PS2. So you bitch into the wrong person. I work retail, man, and my man. And then, uh, finally, our crowning glory, the game itself, which comes in this beautiful steel case, which has several of the gods on it. It has the exact same little blurb on the back. The same little imagery, just smaller, smaller, more condensed. Let's uh, push it out of the sleeve here. The sleeve is just the title. It's hard to see because of my light. It's not super often you see Switch games with steel cases. Uh, there are a handful got the name on the side which is nice because not all the steel cases do that i know metroid dread special edition had a steel case uh as far as i've heard it does not have the name of the game on the side i don't know why crack it open and then we have uh our boy and then our boy but blue also he's it's gonna be hard to see but there's like a metallic -y finish to his hair and uh parts of his outfit on that one and then our little game cartridge all that packaging for a tiny tiny little switch cartridge all right well time to pack all this back up but that was the shimigami tensai fall of man preview edition um i mean i really went over as much of the series history as i felt like honestly <laughs> There's so much more. There's so many more games. If you want to pick up an older game for the series but only have a Switch, then uh, Tensai 3 is available to you. It shouldn't run you more than like 40 bucks usually. Uh, you can get a feel for the game. You might be able to find a pre-owned copy. Uh, if you want to try some of the elements but don't know if the dark and heavy themes are going to do it for you or don't necessarily want to deal with themes that occasionally involve Lots of things that require trigger warnings. Um, 
for a reason. Uh, then maybe Tokyo Mirage Session is a good idea for you, especially if you have a like a base in Fire Emblem already. Um, but yeah. So, hopefully you guys liked seeing these two things, the Zelda game and watch. Sorry, somebody's leaving the house. Uh, and where'd the dust cover go? And the Shin Megami Tensai Fall of Man edition. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. I don't know what the next special edition I'm going to unbox will be. I don't remember what I have on pre-order. Unfortunately, a lot of special... I wanted to... really wanted Tales of Arise to have a special edition. I don't think it did. Um, usually Bandai Namco will only do special editions through themselves, which is really lame. I know Elden Ring's getting a special edition that I am not going to get, uh, unfortunately. I am going to play... I mean, I'm going to get the game, but I'm not going to get the special edition. Whoops! Uh, I might get the Horizon Forbidden West... Uh, special or regalia edition when it comes out in February. I'm not sure. I might have the Danganronpa one on next, pre-order next. Ah, double check. I don't remember. <laughs> so, but thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, like I said, regular videos will return uh, tomorrow, Monday, the 15th. Uh, they will be episodes that recorded several weeks ago. Uh, so nothing well new to you guys, but nothing super brand new. Um, I'm really just kind of waiting to finish up Nano right now, uh, National Love Writing Month, before I can start recording more episodes, at which time we'll be able to finish up Final Fantasy VII. Um, we've still got a while in Wild Arms and Tales of Vesperia and Oxpath Traveler. Uh, and I still want to go back and do the last couple of dungeons in the secret ending for Chrono Trigger, but it'll probably be a little while before I do that. I want to do some level grinding, I think. So, uh, but thanks for watching, guys. I don't know exactly what we're going to play when Final Fantasy VII's done, but we'll figure it out. Thanks for watching. Bye!